How are you today? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us for our Bible study. I want to talk to you this afternoon about threefold cord. I know you're familiar with it from scriptures from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. If you want to turn there with me, I want to use some other verses though, um, because I think the uh, threefold cord has a lot of applications in our spiritual lives. Lots of times we use it at weddings and we understand a husband and a wife uniting their life together. When we live in the right way in that relationship or in relationship and then God comes and he is that third cord that binds us really. So it's not easily broken. You know, that's what the scripture says. Individually, we're weak. Um, I think that applies also to worship. Uh, we're worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And when we do, um, that threefold cord mentality comes in spiritually because God promised that he would be in the midst when we gather that way. You might think of it as the uh, death, burial, and resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ, the theme of, uh, of the gospel, really. Um, Jesus died. Uh, that's necessary um, for the glory of God to be manifest, uh, that he was buried. Well, he had to be buried to bring about the promises that God would say would be impossible to man that when we die in that case of Christ then in the resurrection he's brought to life certainly uh, we see that as a threefold cord uh, metaphor so to speak if you want to look at it that way but really I want to talk today about our lives here on earth and how we can apply that to our relationship with one another and with God because the world is constantly drawing us away from God. And we're living in a particular situation today where we're more secluded in a way, more to ourselves. And not necessarily that's all bad, but I think it has a way to, to remind us of the strength that we have in unity. Uh, and what iron sharpens iron really means was we get together as believers. From Ecclesiastes 4, I'm gonna really start reading at verse seven. Then I returned and saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, for whom do I labor? And bereave my soul of good. This is also vanity, yet is a sore travail. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And then here's verse 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And the threefold cord is not quickly broken. Well, the first thing that we start in this, in this scripture um, is the, the thought of vanity and that nothing makes any difference. What is vanity? That's nothingness. That is working in this life, in this world for yourself and you have no fulfillment. You have no meaning. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter, no matter who you have or what you are. You, you just It's all vanity and that's what the, uh, the writings of, of Solomon is about. The, uh, the vanity of life. And the vanity of life is we don't have the right relationship, and that's the three-fold cord part of it. So this, this writer is saying that's all vanity, and then he says, he, he's not, he's looking at it, there's one alone, and that doesn't mean that here's somebody that's alone, maybe a widow or a widower, or somebody that's an orphan or whatever, but it's a person that's alone because they wanna be. And uh, they're living for themselves, because he said, Yea, he hath neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labor, neither is his eye satisfied with riches. See, see what he's doing, he's working for himself. I don't want to get married, it's going to cost me too much. I don't want any children, I can't, I don't want to have to deal with all the, the cost or whatever. Um, even friends, I mean, you know, I just, I just want this by myself. Neither saith he, for whom do I labor? and bereave my soul of good. This is also vanity, yet it is a sore travail. So, so here's the writer saying, you know, you, you take 
a person that is just in it for themselves. It's kind of like a caterpillar, okay? That caterpillar is continually devouring all the plants. I had them on my tomato plants this year in the garden and I had to constantly pick them off. They were just eating all the, the leaves, the stems even. Not a few rows over were butterflies. Something had to happen for that caterpillar to get to be a butterfly. In the life of a believer, it's God. Only God can make a butterfly. So, so that caterpillar, though, has a covetous mentality, and it's a vain life. And if you're living like that, do not do it. Um, consider, what are you living for? Are you living for God? What are you working for? Are you doing it for yourself or for one another? You know, I tell you, I think our greatest happiness is understanding that there's things that are more valuable than money. I know we got to make a living, and we need to work and do everything for the glory of God. And if we can better ourselves, I think God has has uh, standards in His Word to do it if it's, if it's right that we do that. But but just to try to hoard up, that's how, that's not what God has called us to be, and that's where vanity is leading. That cord is going to be broken because you don't have a relationship, not with God or not with one another. And so that makes, that makes a big difference in our life. Uh, I have a few cows, and uh, my wife, Penny, reminds me all the time I never make any money with it. I mean, not any spending money. Uh, and I don't have a big herd. I know a lot of, I have a lot of friends that do, and they make a lot of money. I'm sure they do. But, but I found out this year where my profit with my cattle business really is. And I'll tell you where it is. It's not when I take the money to the bank when I sell one. It's when I ride my grandchildren and family around in the pasture and we look at those cows and they just get real excited. I mean, that's therapy for me. And, and I, I tell you, I found out that is the profit. That is the profit, just the joy of enjoying that. Now, you probably have those kind of things in your life in other ways. And you need to thank God for it because that is what makes the vanity of life go away. And say, so, you know what? It is worth it all. It is worth it. And so... So it's worth it because somebody else is enjoying it with you. See, my kids in the, or grandkids and my daughters or son-in-laws or my wife and all as we ride around. And that's just a small thing. I mean, we're just really small time folks in that way. But, but really, it's, it's an exciting time for a, a two-year-old or a six-year-old or, or whatever. And uh, I enjoy that. I just really rejoice in that as we see God's creation in and, and that animal kingdom life. And, the, the grass and the trees and the birds and everything that go with it. I think we need to take more time to do that. But covetousness is what's going to take away our really embracing the threefold cord that God has called us to live by. He says in verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So, you know, you have somebody in there with you. And you, you can all relate this, I bet, right now in your life, in your marriage or your business cohorts or whatever, uh, your comrades in your, in your work, uh, your cohorts, uh, the, you encourage one another. Two are better than one, and, and here's why. For in verse 10, if they fall, the one will help lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. So we all fall, we do, and we need one another. If you fall and you don't have anybody to pick you up, that's really, really tough. And, uh, you know, when I think about uh, a situation in my life years ago, I'm, I'm, I wasn't preaching then. I was doing a lot of forestry work. And I remember I was in the woods looking at some property with Judge Avant Edenfield. You might remember Judge Edenfield was a famous federal judge in this area. And he had some property not long, far from here. And he asked me to look at the woods with him. And I was walking just he and I in the woods and he tripped and fell down. And I still, I still remember this, I don't know what I think about this. He held his hand up and I reached and I grabbed, pulled him up, you know. I mean, he didn't fall hard, it was just briars or whatever, and he got his foot tripped up. But I thought about going, I never said a word. I said, you know, here I am, was here. I was able to lift Judge Avant and Evan fell up. And you know, you would have done the same thing or he would have done it to me, but, but I'm saying I was there and we fall in lives. You know, I live in the country and I have a dirt road and there's many times, or several at least, I pull people out of this, off this road, they'll get in the road and, or get off the road in bad weather and get in the ditch. I have to go pull them out. Well, I have to stay on the road to pull them out of the ditch. You have to stay on the road of life to do what God's called you to do to help somebody else out. And we need to, we need to thank God for it. We need to, we need to say thank you, God, 
for our opportunity because God has placed you where you are right now through his love and grace. So we need to be content with that and understand his sufficiency in that. So that's what kind of ties life together with our relationship, whoever that may be, because God now is the one that gives us the strength to maintain that in our lives. So, so look at this with me now. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? So we need one another. That's why God uh, instigated the institution of marriage, for example, that two, a man and a woman, become one. And there's a threefold cord there. There's some leaving and, and receiving and cleaving because God says in Genesis 2, uh, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be united to his wife or to the mate that he receives from God. You see, God brought Eve to Adam as God brings our spouse to us in a spiritual relationship called marriage. And then we, he said, there then shall, for this reason shall a man cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. So there's a threefold cord there even. So we see that all over God's word. But I'm talking about this evening kind of in our, in our life, though I believe everything's spiritual, but in our, in our temporal life, our secular life, it makes it, it makes it binding that we do it for the right reason. It's just not a vanity because if we do, we won't make it. We won't make it alone. We, we got to have God in this relationship, whether it's in your work, uh, your church, or your marriage, or whatever you do. And so the thing that bites this away, this, this uh, splits this, this uh, threefold cord, again, is, is selfishness. We see that from the first part of these verses, I think, where we, God shows us that this person this, that is eaten up with vanity is just in it for themselves, you know. So covetousness, let's look at that just for a minute and see how that we might can deal with that. But covetousness is really uh, living in a way, and I think, I think about it, if you're gonna define it, I think about it like this. It's uh, covetousness is wanting the wrong things. Um, like if you want wealth or you just want attention, you want power, you want things that God said you shouldn't have in that way, then that's covetousness. It's a sin, and it's what Satan likes to do. That's exactly how he tapped it, tempted Adam and Eve in the, in the garden. He made them want something that was the wrong thing, namely what God had told them not to have. Secondly, I see covetousness as, as, as wanting the right thing for the wrong reason. You know, you can want the right thing for the wrong reason. Say, for example, me a preacher. Why do I want to be a preacher? Say if I wanted to be a preacher because I wanted to be, I wanted the money. I wanted to do it for the money. Or I wanted to be a preacher because I want people to say, man, that was a good sermon. Uh, I, like, I like him. You know, everybody likes the preacher. Or maybe I wanted to do it because here's an occupation you only work one day a week and maybe only a couple hours on that day. I mean, man, I mean, who would, want, who would not want that? Well, that would be the wrong reason to... Uh, to want something right because being a preacher is a right thing but if I'm looking at it like that I'm doing it for the wrong reason thirdly I think of covetousness as wanting the right thing at the wrong time say a couple who have been dating and think feel like they love each other they decided they're gonna have an, an intimate even sexual relationship before they're married well, what they're doing right there, that's, that's a form of covetousness in that they want the right thing. That relationship, that sexual desire is from God, but they want it at the wrong time because God says, do it at marriage, after you're married. That's when God says that's right, and that's what we should do. Otherwise, it's going to not mean anything. It's going to be vanity. I want you to see that with me, whatever it is. And then, you know, we can... We can Covetousness, fourthly, I think, is wanting the right thing in the wrong amount. You know, nothing wrong with money. You know, uh, uh, the Bible says that money is, you know, the, the, the wanting of money is the root of all evil. It's not the money itself. It's wanting so much of it, you know. And if you are a vanity in life, you'll never have enough. Your eyes will never be satisfied. So I want you to see that with me. That, that's the threefold cord mentality. And, and then let's look at the, he goes on to say, 
and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now, we need this relationship in our life. This is not just a verse for weddings. Um, in, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, it's the Old Testament, 2 Samuel 10. Let me turn there with you. Here, Joab was in a battle, and he needed some help. You never know when you need some help. And you know what I found the best? time to know or the person you call on when you need help is a person that's helped you before. So, you know, it's good that we can be helpful to one another. In 2 Samuel 10, verse 11, here's Joab, and things are getting pretty hot with him in the battle against the Syrians, and he tells his brother Abishai this in verse 11, and he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. That's three, four cord mentality. What are you saying? You know, I tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to come, and if you need me, uh, I'm going to be there. But if I need you, I want you to know that I uh, want to depend on you being there. And so that was a, that was a great blessing to see that. Now I wanted to turn over before I leave you to uh, First Timothy chapter six and see the the mentality here of the threefold cord relating to covetousness and how we deal with that in our life because covetousness will tear that cord and bind us away from our life with God and cause us to be just so weak and undone and everything's vanity you know if you're living that way then then that could be that could be what's going on in your life but here in the New Testament first Timothy chapter 6 we see the the remedy for covetousness and it's called contentment and here, here uh, uh, the letter to Timothy says in 1 Timothy 6, verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So here what we have is a formula for great gain. And this is not vanity, it's godly gain in life. It's living a life that you're not wasting grace, you're living for God's glory, and you're having peace and comfort. You might make a lot of money, you might have everything just hunky door in your life, but you're gonna really enjoy it. You know where it's gonna come from. It's not like you have it all and you just take it for granted and it ends up being vanity and you just have nobody to share it with. You know, I never will forget my daddy told me one time, he said, Randy, when you get old, uh, you'll realize that everything you're living for is your children. And you know, I see that now. I see that in my life and, uh, and I understand what he's talking about because that's really all that means is what we can give to somebody else. That's why God blesses us with riches and things in our life so that we can just give them to somebody else and share them, share them with them. That's why he gives us our talents, our, our abilities, our gifts, whatever they might be. But I want you to look at this formula, but godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So here you have three ingredients, I would say, to great gain. This is gain that the threefold fold cord maintains in our lives, the stability, the strength that we have to serve Christ no matter what. Because contentment is just saying, I'm satisfied with God. I'm thankful that God has blessed me to have whatever I have or what I don't have because I know it comes from God. But godliness is, here's the formula, godliness plus contentment plus humility equals great gain, okay? Godliness, uh, contentment, and humility. Uh, and we see that in these two verses. Um, godliness is, is who I am. Know who you are. You are a child of God. You are co-heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. All things are yours. And, you know, Romans 14, 8 says, If we live, we're the Lord's. If we die, we're the Lord's. If we live, therefore, or if we die, we're the Lord's. Hey, that is godliness. And we need to live in a godly lifestyle because God has given us that spirit of grace within our hearts to live like that. And then contentment. If godliness is who I am, contentment is what I have. And realize that whatever you have, it comes from God. Or whatever you don't have, you be thankful for it. 
you know, I'm so thankful that God didn't, didn't bless me to make a lot of money with the cows or to, to have a, to be a big preacher, to have 10,000, 20,000 people in your congregation. I, I probably, I know I couldn't handle it. And I think God knows that too. So you be content with whatever your lot is. If it's in a wheelchair or if it's in a, um, a nursing home, understand that God knows about that. And he's given that to you because he knows that is your best terrain and platform to glorify him and be a faithful witness to him. And so what a blessing that is. And then, and then, uh, and then humility. He says in verse 7, for we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. So what is that? That's where I come from. Realize that we came into this world with nothing, and we're going to surely take nothing out with us. And that's, that's the kind of mentality or attitude that, that you remember Job used when he lost everything he had in the very first chapter, when the devil was given permission by God to take it all away. You remember what Job said. He says, I brought nothing into this world, I shall take nothing out. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, Job had that, his life was advanced. Now, he was a great man. He was a wealthy, wealthy man. But he knew where it come from. So it was all taken away. He didn't get all frazzled. He sure had some times in the book of Job trying to figure out where God was. But Job maintained his integrity through it all. Why? Because he had a cord, the threefold cord to help him. You know, see, what I mean by this is when we get God right in our life and he puts that constituent of his spirit in, in our efforts, man, it just makes all the difference. It binds our heart. It keeps us with the people that God would have us be with. Um, it keeps us uh, satisfied in our life. Even if we have no other physical person, we have the binding of the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that threefold cord to say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So I just wanted you to, to think about this with me this evening and see the great, great merit of the threefold cord uh, and how it, it sort of pictures everything in our life the way it ought to be. But the main ingredient, of course, is God. That is going to be our strength. God says, except the Lord build the house, we labor in vain that build it. So that ingredient is so important in our life. But you know, to know that we don't have to live in vanity and just take our lives and work, work, work and not really know anybody is benefiting or we want it all for ourselves, we're gonna end up lonely, we're gonna end up frustrated, we're gonna end up disappointed. But when we understand that, that godliness with contentment plus humility will put us in a three-four chord moan according to these words from 1 Timothy chapter 6, where we're going to be able to stand. We're going to be able to hold on. And, you know, sometimes we feel like in life, you know, we're about to come unglued. We might think we're holding on to our last straw. But you know what? I believe if we take this threefold cord and we understand it by faith and we thank God for our lives and we're humble enough to understand where we come from, and with the prosperity of Christ in our hearts of where we're going, we can say, you know, there may be times, and, and there probably will be, where we just got to tie the knot in the end of that threefold cord and just hold on. Sometimes you have to do that, but I'm going to tell you, when you do that, if you get to that point where you have to, it will not break. You can just hold it there. God will be there. You're under his great arms, and what a strength he is to it. He is the strength of our life. May the Lord bless you and keep you close to him. Would you bow with me for a closing prayer? Dear most precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the glory of your life in us through Christ our Lord. We thank you for forgiveness of our sins. We thank you, Lord, for faith and hope and love. We thank you for all the threefold cord uh, sayings in your word, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you have not left us alone. We thank you, Lord, for the circumstances and the people and the places in our life. But we thank you, Lord, even those things are twined and wrapped around our lives and our being. We know, Lord, the cord that binds it all is you. And we just thank you, Lord, for doing that. If we ever start coming unraveled, we pray, O oh Lord, that your grace would seal us all over again. And you renew our faith and keep us very close to thee. Thank you, Lord, for this day. 
Thank you for loving us, for forgiving us, and for your precious word. In Jesus' name I pray.